welcome back to another episode of the Process and Automation Podcast with the Automation Guys. In today's episode, we go through the 10 signs why you need a case management solution. And uh, yeah, so they are really good 10 points. We have um, a research for you guys and uh, I will kick off straight away. Um, so one sign is you are using spreadsheets to manage the really important and mission critical work in your company. So everyone knows uh, spreadsheets are, of course, very easy to use. Everyone knows it. It's on, installed on every on every workstation, and it takes just a few minutes to really get going. Um, but the big problem with spreadsheet is they just don't scale, and oftentimes they are fraught with errors of course when you have lots of different versions uh, circulating around and uh, someone is by mistake deleting a row so of course plenty of errors are possible there so that can impact important decisions and information um, making actually in the business and um, yeah i think that's that's one really really good sign why you should actually move away from um from spreadsheets for sort of mission critical um yeah. Yeah, uh, it's activity it's and work probably a good place to start in your business if you do a lot of case management centric type activities um go and find those spreadsheets um uh, they will give you a clue as to where and what type of uh, case centric automation you you need to put in place um mm -hmm. another one to look out for is you are drowning in physical paper for each case. Now, paper reduction has some obvious benefits, but it can also, as you would know, most people will know, it can improve your business efficiency. Um, the problem with paper is that information flow using paper is, 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 is really slow. Um, it becomes very stale. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and by the time it sort of reached or there's a change in it, um, it you know, it needs changing again. Uh, so it's it's very labor intensive. Um, you know, you look at, at at creating handwritten signatures and having to export data manually um, and to, to provide some sort of summary, print things out, scan things, mm. um, you know, and, and I, th I think, you know, what we're saying here is that paper really hurts um, that your processes a lot. Um, you know, some people say it hurts more than actually uh, the paper cuts the paper give you, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I know it just, just hit me and uh, I thought maybe we should clarify that term case management slightly um, because maybe some of our listeners might listen, okay, well, case management, uh, <laughs> You might think about sort of uh, uh, of sort of legal cases, that kind of stuff. But generally, when we talk about case management, um, it is not really just around that legal case. Uh, it could be, um, it could be um, sort of uh, a process um, and some flow within the company, sort of dealing with whatever um, sort of uh, I would say thing in your business it could be a place yeah. an event the person um a customer request all sorts of stuff so that 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 will, will, is what we sort of describe as a case here so it's not really really limited to that yeah. um uh, very sort of legal case management everyone might think of and it's it's pretty much everything what is a bit more unstructured in the business so so this is what you would usually put into a case management system yeah, so um, I hope that that quick uh, detour uh, was helpful. And um, yeah, just look at the next point. Um, so when working anywhere outside of the office, you are hamstrung without internet access and forced to fall back on manual paper processes. So field working teams like service technicians, consultants and maintenance staff at uh, yeah, previously been restricted to manual and uh, yeah, the paper-based work due to um, connectivity issues. But um, with the continued development, um, so we 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 all know about five G. It's no longer necessary for for those um, teams um, to carry out sort of the the outdated style of working, and uh, even 
if your teams are without internet access and internet service, working offline should be should not be an issue with um, with all the technology we have available these days with mobile applications. Yeah. So, so these outdated processes um, are slow, inefficient, and um, yeah, and they are not agile and yeah, they're very slow. Of course, yeah. Um, it's really needed in the in the new work of um and the new work environment really yeah yeah now that's a good one um the next one is you often deal with what i call swivel chair syndrome and what that means is bouncing from different screens and tabs to find the information you need across your different systems and this has become a problem that is getting worse every day you know, all of us are guilty of having dozens of tabs and windows <laughs> and applications open at once. And, you know, this this is compounded when you add multiple screens to your desk, for example. Mm-hmm. So there's just more more place to, to open up these tabs. And jumping back and for, forward between these various point solutions, email, spreadsheet, is, is not very efficient. And, you know, it, it can create confusion and lead to incorrect decisions on on these cases that we are dealing with mm, yeah it's a good point <laughs> even uh, even with all those uh, tabs um, uh, yeah and applications it's really difficult um, to really find the truth of that information and and really that brings us to to our fifth um, sign you spend a substantial amount of your time searching for that right piece of information yeah and um, yeah as, as you mentioned with all the tabs uh, it's really really difficult um, so you look in your CRM your emails messages other systems, legacy systems. Sometimes it's really, really difficult actually to get that information out. Sometimes you have we 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 came across a few in the past. You actually have to log into a separate terminal, um, which was still running on this. Uh, you know these green screens, right? Yeah. Um, so to get some some really really strange information from from that, um, yeah. So you need all that information to complete a task or answer maybe a specific question and um yeah and then sometimes you find different versions of of that data and you yeah it doesn't really make it make your life easier so um and we all probably agree it would be awesome um to to do it obviously in in a better way um yeah. and have all that information in one place uh, where it's very current and accurate, and uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's really giving you the the, the the truth of information at any time and anywhere, really. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that kind of brings me on to the next point. Um, if you find yourself, um, you know, uh, looking at your cases, and there's a there's a, there's a lack of um, kind of a consistent visibility across them. You know, so again, from a management perspective, this can really hinder your ability to drive, you know, speed and efficiency processing these cases. And, you know, just just getting a basic understanding of, you know, what's going on can be a, a, a very big challenge if, if you don't have automated case management. You know, uh, for example, you know, a simple tracking question like how many people raised a particular inquiry about a specific mm. product really turns into a nightmare and you know you have to hunt for this information whereas <laughs> if you have automated uh, case management you know that that's something very easy to achieve because you could just use a specific view filter your cases for example by a, mm. a case type or subtypes and that information is available yeah very good point um yeah, the next sign um, is you don't have a productive way to collaborate on details and information and resort to email messaging meetings or calls. Yeah, yeah that's actually yeah, <laughs> very typical all, all day, more, more than, uh, than, than ever, I would say. Yeah, internal communications can indeed be really, really tricky um, and really fast. And ad hoc email messaging apps, phone calls, video calls, um, or can leave someone out with uh, 
out who is vital to the project. So um, more importantly, these methods don't really provide uh, all the visibility to to allow everyone see um, how the progress is. So um, yeah, it would be really nice if you can actually see it in maybe one screen. So so those status updates on cases, um, mm -hmm. yeah, can can very quickly take. All, all the good valuable time away from from people uh, as part of the process um and um yeah and very often these things have to be repeated over and over again to um uh to other systems um so yeah it really needs that single system ideally where everyone gets the gets the gets a picture of what's going on and it, of course it's easy to work very quickly hack a message into WhatsApp and uh, yeah. Teams and but no one will find that information ever again. Um, yeah, that that can't be a way forward uh, these yeah. days. Yeah. And another point is compliancy might be a real concern for you. Mm. And, you know, you don't have reliable logs to go back uh, to support a particular case. Um, you know, looking back at how cases were handled and ensuring the proper steps were taken, I mean, you know, it's, it's practically impossible without reliable, well-organized data, um, you know, and, and proper audits would require looking into lots of different places, different systems. Mm. And you can only imagine a number of compliance breaches that <laughs> may have occurred because the data is so scattered. So case, case management, a, a, a byproduct of case management is audit logs, which will obviously provide some a compliancy peace of mind. Yeah, that really remembers uh, me of 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 a situation um, mm -hmm. um, in a financial institution. So they they were basically requests like you would do nowadays on on a normal sort of application. So every request was basically one spreadsheet, and. Uh, and all the information and even the approvals. I think uh, back then it was very popular to do sort of macro programming. You had buttons even in spreadsheets. So really, really bringing bringing application logic into the spreadsheet. But anyway, so basically you had thousands of those cases in spreadsheets, and um, and then uh, that was fine, I guess, for the normal processing. But if something was uh, then uh, needed for a report, uh, they had to. You basically go through all the different spreadsheets, compile lists out of that. So that was a a, a task for for over days, um, and then bringing in that case management systems and and all the requests actually into that case management system was just press of a button. There was a list of everything you could say. Give me this and this and this information within uh, no time really. So from from days or. To, to just seconds of work. So this is this is what a system like that can do. And yeah. uh, no one wants to pull that information manually anyway. This is sort of work no one, yeah. no one uh, I think it's a pain, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I suppose from a, a case management perspective, all of that metrics is available. So that can all just be collated uh, very quickly mm. and use, use for reporting, for example. Uh, management reports or operational reports. Um, another point is um, if you feel that your data is siloed across different systems and is often outdated or inaccurate, mm. um, that's also a telltale sign that you you need some digital case management in your life. Um, you know, and sometimes I guess even when you get your data, you feel it's stale. Um, you tend to read, read reports on what's happened in Q1 um, or data that's that that was created in Q1, mm. and it's a, a Q4 report or a, a report that you read in Q4. So it's it's really too late to make any kind of significant decisions or, or changes mm. if the if the data is outdated or inaccurate. Um, you know, in, in in our modern times, uh, th there's no real time to wait on lagging data sets as, um, you know, uh, as, as people, uh, you know, run their businesses. Um, you know, you, you need to have the data almost in real time. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the good news in all of this is that modern low-code case management solutions 
um, you know, can change all of this. Um, you mm. know, we mentioned these 10 points, low code case management provide you with, with all the tools you, you need to manage, execute, and analyze your case workers with, with lightning speed, agility, and also more importantly, in a, in a, in a very secure way, low code t- tools support many types of cases. Um, Sasha, mm. you mentioned earlier, uh, legal cases, but of course a case could be anything from a, a litigation case to a customer complaint, to a support ticket. Um, all of these things are types of cases. And at the end of the day, it just becomes matter management. Things come into your business that needs to be dealt with, you need to have some sort of outcome. And once that's done, um, you know, obviously the case is closed. You can go back on audits to, to view its history. Um, while cases are still being dealt with, that's where mm-hmm. you know you can have these, these reports to tell you how many you have in your business. Um, and it just speeds up the the way that that these cases conclude, um, and it, it makes it very very efficient to to you know adopt uh, digital case management. Yeah, and I think there uh, you mentioned you mentioned the different types of cases, and and indeed they're probably. Um, uh, hundreds of those yeah. kind of cases in every organization, every department, so wherever. So we, we touched on this in, in, in our first sign, uh, wherever there are spreadsheets <laughs> really flying around as sort of as the thing um, uh, or as part of the workflow and the process, then it's really, really good good to move that away from the spreadsheet. And yeah, with the low code uh not not necessarily everyone can can get started with that one, but probably um, yeah. So the idea is there that um, with low code, um, uh, people in the business which are not sort of typical developers, hardcore developers, high code developers, can actually get started with it. So um, and that's that's the beauty of the low code world. And um, combining these two things, case management and low code, yeah. So everyone can really get going. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Yeah. And I guess, um, you know, just from a, a technology perspective, um, you know, cases is all about receiving new matter into your business. Um, there's going to be workflow orchestration, which can be quickly configured using a low code platform. Um, there might be some forms development, which mm. is uh, done using a, a low code platform as well. It's It's got forms develop or form design capabilities where you drag and drop all of the elements of your cases in. Um, You know, we can even go as far as to uh, perhaps plug in some robotic process automation where, for instance, for a particular case, you might have to uh, do a checking, a check on a third party website, uh, sanctions check, AML check. um, So the robot can be deployed to do that. So it just opens up a lot of opportunity to to digitize the way you mm. deal with cases with inside your business. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, I hope this overview of the 10 signs why you might need a case management solution was helpful. And um, yeah, it would be great if you can give us feedback on this. Um, as always, we are here for you um, to um, to help you further with this topic and uh, yeah it would be great if you can uh, join us back here next time and until then let's automate it unfortunately that's it again with this episode of the process and automation podcast if you like this episode please give us a five-star rating and don't forget to subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss any upcoming episode we hope you will tune in next time and until then let's automate it